Hi everybody, it's Caroline here from CraftyCarolineCreates.com. Thanks for pressing play on the video today. How cute is today's project? It is a little box of decorated tea lights and we're going to make the box. And there is a, a, self, a window sheet sort of acetate lid and then this is a little belly band that slides on and off. The tea lights are cheap as chips from Ikea. I think I got about 30 for about £1.50, something like that. So these are really, really cheap to make. But how professional and how gorgeous do they look? Um, you know, they're great. I think if you do craft fairs, these will sell really well. If you've got a lot of people you want to give a little token gift to at Christmas, I think these will go down really, really well. So let's stop talking and I will show you exactly how I made it. Okay. So we're going to start with the box itself and this one is cherry cobbler with real red. Sorry, cherry cobbler with real red, of course it's not. Cherry cobbler and garden green. Um, so I thought we'd make a garden green box just to mix it up a little bit. So a piece of garden green cardstock. It measures eight and three quarters by four and a quarter. All of the dimensions will be on my blog, craftycarolinecreates.com, where you can also buy everything um, that I'm showing you in the video, all the crafting tools, if you want to have a go at making your own. I do really appreciate it um, when you do order through me. So let us um, start by doing some scoring on this piece of cardstock. Right, oh, got a bit of dimensional coming along for the ride. Okay, so let's start by scoring this and we're going to score it on all four sides at half an inch and at one and three eighths of an inch apparently half an inch and one and three eighths of an inch okay half an inch one and three eighths of an inch and turn it round last time half an inch and one and three eighths of an inch okay just put that to one side for the time being what i also have here is a piece of window sheet this measures 11 sorry seven and eleven sixteenths by three and three sixteenths all those measurements are on my blog um, and what we're going to do is we're going to score this on all four of the sides at through at seven eighths of an inch let me just there we go oh. I'm going to move this over a little bit because I keep knocking it. I am going to invest at some point in the future in a better tripod so I don't have to work around it. So I'm not knocking it over but I think that will work. Okay, so we're going to do a 7 8 of an inch. And what you need to do is really press on quite hard down to this window sheet. And you need to go back and forward quite a few times. And that will just help you to get a really deep groove in, in the plastic sheeting. Turn it round and again at seven eighths of an inch. Okay. An eighth of an inch. Arr, really press that hard. It's worth just taking a bit of time just to get this point right because this will be the most important bit when it comes to then um, building up a box in a little while. Okay. Arr, there we go. I think we're done. Okay, so we'll keep working on this bit. Um, uh, that was just a little, little bit of backing paper I left on so you could see a little bit better. And then what we just need to do is on those creases we've just made, just press on really hard with your bone folder and they will go nice and sharp. Okay, you see? And then we just do the other side. There we go. Press on, as I said, nice and firmly. Just move that out of the way. These two bits at the end. Just do those two as well. And these two end bits finally. Okay, and then we'll get our scissors and we are just going to, like we would making any other box, cut up the corners and just notch them out slightly, okay? Don't know how well you can see that. There we go. I think you can see that quite well. So we've just made that little wedge shape in that corner and we'll do that on all four corners. And 
these two as well. that one off there we go okay then I'm just going to build this up using glue dots so I've got my super duper stamping up mini glue dots peel it off using my bone folder and I'm just going to pop one on that wedge flap that we've just made and then fold that up okay so you can see the glue dot but it is quite subtle um, and when we build the box up this these are going to be inside, so when you give them as a gift, you can't actually see um, this part of the box anyway. Okay, let's press that into position. Last two on this end. I'm going to put it on the oh, outside and then just fold that in to make a nice box. And our last one here. Perfect. Okay, so that's our lid all made and ready to go. So we'll move on to making our base, which is the one we scored um, twice. So we're going to score and burnish all of those um, score lines. Sorry, fold and burnish all of those score lines. I always say, I always say fold, oh, I always say score, oh, I say it wrong anyway, whatever I say. Right. And the last end here. Okay. And then we're just going to make a reinforced base, which if you've watched a lot of my videos, you will see me do quite a lot. So we're going to cut up here and here. And then cut off what is effectively an L shape from each corner, just like that. And then we'll just wedge this bit out. And then we'll wedge those two tabs there as well. So in each corner you're going to make a shape that looks a little bit like that. So I'll just whiz around and do the other corners. And I did when I first made this box, I did it just with a normal tray. So I made the base in exactly the same way as I made the lid. And I just found it was just a little bit flimsy. And by doing this it gives it a little bit more strength. And it also therefore makes it feel a little bit more luxurious. Um, doesn't feel quite as flimsy as it did when I did it with just um, just a, a plain tray. So you could do it with a plain tray if you wanted, if you wanted to save a little bit of cardstock and a little bit of time, but I think it's worth spending that extra few minutes and that little bit more cardstock um, to really make this box a little bit more special. Okay, let's just finish this one off here. And there we go. Okay, let's move all those bits out. I just hold that like that. I know some of you like to just compare at this point to make sure you have it done it correctly. I'm going to use fuse for this bit. Oh, I just missed that corner. There we go. So that's what it should look like. And we're going to put a little bit of fuse on the underside of these two um, flaps. Okay, and then on these long flaps, we are going to put the fuse on the same side that's facing up. Okay, and on this flap at the end, we're going to do the same on the side that's facing up. Okay, then we're going to fold it up by just pressing those flaps on top of each other, like this. Okay, and once we've made it up like that, we just fold those top flaps down over and that just gives us a nicely reinforced tray, it just makes it a little bit sturdier. Okay, so that's a box made. Okay, I'm just going to check now, heart in the mouth moment, that the lid should fit nicely inside there. Oh, which it will. Oh, it's a little bit tight actually. Oh. there we go so it does fit inside that was a little bit tighter than I would have liked but it does fit um, 
just make sure you're very careful with your coding and scoring and make sure that fits tightly but you can see that does fit inside there okay now for our tea light as i said i bought um lots of tea lights cheap as you like in ikea and i've just decorated them using some of our gorgeous designer series paper this is the one that's called warmth and cheer and it's a dsp stack so you get a whole host of six by six patterns really beautiful to put two here that are sort of contrasting but complementary, so the same pattern in different colours. For this one I thought we'd go a little bit bolder and we're going to use this one which is trees and this one which is little baubles. You can see where I've been doing some practising. So I'm just going to use my um, 1 and 3 8 inch circle punch. I'm just going to punch out, lining up so I get the pattern looking quite nice. Like that. Two of those using that. And then you need to do two from this sheet, which I have already done. So these are our, um, our four circles. Then I'm just going to take another um, scrap. Here's a scrap piece of whisper white and punch out another hole. Okay. And what I'm going to do what, is just fold this in half. This is the scrap piece. Fold this in half one way. Open it out and then fold it in half the other way. And what that will do, that will find the center of your circle for you. So where those two fold lines cross, I don't know if you can see that very well, but where those two fold lines cross, that is the center. So I'm going to use my one eighth of an inch circle punch to punch a hole through where those two crosses meet. Okay, so I've got a hole in the center of my circle. And then I can use that as a template to punch a hole in this, the pattern paper pieces that I have just cut out. So just do that and do two at a time, speed it up. There we go. And the last one here, like that. And then all we can do is lift up our, wa our wick and feed that on, blend a wax over and how pretty does that Like It's just transformed it in a second. What I will say is this is purely decorative. Um, you do need to take off the paper before you light the candles. Um, so maybe if you are giving these as a gift or you are selling them, it might be a good idea just to put a little note in the bottom of the box just to say, you know, remove the paper before you burn it. I did say that to my husband and he, he was all for experimenting and see what seeing what happened. Um, if we did set fire to it, but I, um, no, I value my house a bit too much to to do that. So I'm just going to pop those into the box. Then our lid will slide over and fit down on top. We've just had it in, so we know it fits in. There we go. Perfect sort of um, so you see just how pretty that looks the last thing to do is to make our belly band and for that I have a strip of cherry cobbler which measures um, five and a half inches by one and a half inches and a strip of the DSP which measures three quarters of an inch and um, by about five and a half inches as well just going to start by folding this round our box and just nipping that into place okay take it off I'm just going to go over those score lines with my bone folder there we go. that's one there one there and last one there okay fold it out again and I'm just going to put a little bit of fuse on the back of the DSP and then stick that down in the middle of my belly band like that okay so I'm going to trim off those edges I've cut it a little bit put the paper a little bit longer but it doesn't matter I can trim that off quickly okay straighten you back up wrap this round again get the pedals the right size okay and a little bit of fuse on the back of this piece and then we can just stick that together. So you want it, you want it tight so that it will stay on, but not too tight that you can't slide it off. So something like that is perfect. 
there we go pop that wherever you want to position that something like that I think looks nice and then for the little sentiment we are going to use the um, Peaceful Pines stamp set which has this tis the season um, sentiment in there which I have already mounted and then lost okay here we go and I'm going to use my markers to get a two-tone effect on this if you've watched a few of my videos you will know that I've never really been sold on the point of markers but stamping up in the new catalogue you can buy just a few colours so I bought the colour pairs and I'm loving the way you can really pick out different parts of a stamp using these um, to give like a really easy two tone effect so I'm colouring Tis the Season in, in real red just using the brush point of my marker to do that okay and then I'm going to go back with my um, garden green one and just colour in the snowflakes in garden green there we go the last one here just using the brush end to do that I'm going to huff on there I'm going to find some wistful white cardstock stamp that down and there you can see how easy it is to get that two coloured effect punch that out it fits it just fits in the one inch circle punch if you punch it close enough to the edge of the cardstock something like that and then I'm going to pop that up using a dimensional if I can find where I've put them oh, dimensionals seem to grow legs on my desk here we go one dimensional on the back of there oh peel that off I'm just going to stick that on the middle oh and there we go in white oh that would have looked nice if I didn't on cherry cop in on that um crumb cake wouldn't it I might do that for the picture I might swap that stamp it on to some crumb cake cardstock and see how that looks but there we go two very quick but incredibly effective and very professional looking gifts I think thanks for watching and I will um, see you again soon bye bye